Boy, that was a great, great that was one of our great yeah. Our anticipation, experience. I guess, was uh, to, uh, well, I know for me, was to try to conceal the fact that I was in awe of the guy and to just look like a fellow pro in there to, to do a job. And uh, if if he was uh, had a similar offhand attitude towards the <laughs> two of us, he was he, uh, he was more convincing. Yeah. But um, you know, we were thrilled to get the job. It was just a, you know a total out of the blue thing, and uh, it was on the strength really of a Mary Tyler Moore show script yeah. that we that yeah. we sent. And this was a pilot with, called Your Place or Mine with James Coco, which was to take place in New York. And, of course, we had seen, you know, the hospital, and we had seen uh, Marty even before that. But that was about it. All his big dramas on NBC years earlier when we were in high school, I mean, I know I, I hadn't seen any of them. So... Uh, we, the task was to try to write like Patty, you know, and to try to, uh, he had this, you know. Well, tell he, him why, t tell him why he, hi he, he, why he wanted to hire, wh why would Patty Chayefsky want to hire anybody to help him at all? And it was because he felt that he knew he had two pilots to do for NBC. He had an hour pilot and a half hour pilot. And he felt totally confident in his ability to write a, you know, one hour pilot, that was his bread and butter, but to, but he had never done a sitcom and he just didn't think he necessarily, which is a, I mean, it says a lot when Patty Chayefsky says, you know, I think maybe I could use a little, uh, help in getting set off in the right direction on doing a situation comedy. Cause I haven't had that experience. And, and he came to California with the goal in mind of finding writers to help him do that. So that was terrific. Years earlier, he had done a, a Marty, there, there was a spin a Marty uh, pilot with uh, uh, the guy who played the father on uh, Happy Days. Um, Tom Bosley? Tom, Tom Bosley in the Marty wow. role. And he, he wanted nothing, nothing to do with the writing. And also he was planning on, uh, you know, his movie careers and he wanted somebody who could take over the show, so I, you know, in a way, our we we each wrote a script. I mean, we we worked out the story in his <laughs> office in New York together. Then we, he stayed in his office and wrote his version of the script. And we he found an office for us down near Times Square, and we went there and wrote our version, which was mainly, I think, a security blanket to know that somebody could at least uh, write in the style of this show. But we spent a long time working out the story with long him in his time. office. Yeah, a long time. And it was just a, a, a fun experience. He was just a very, uh, you know, he was funny. He uh, had a, you know, sort of a Bronx vibe about him. You know, very comfortable to be around. He we would we always tell it. Well, yeah. we tell this story about uh, one day Elias and I, we, we loved um, uh, Nathan's. Nathan's Hot Dogs. And they were opening up a new Nathan's at Times Square. Mm -hmm. Previously, they were only way out of, at Coney Island. Yeah. And uh, we were, our office was just <laughs> up 7th Avenue uh, on, the, on the 11th floor above the Carnegie Deli. Uh, and uh, so he heard us, you know, babbling on about Nathan's hot dogs. So he said, come on, you know, his, his mouth was watering. Let's go. We, we were there in the dead of winter in the middle of January. <laughs> we put on our coats and we go marching down 7th Avenue, to, wolfing down these Nathan, Nathan's hot dogs and the cottage fries. And uh, then we're all done, ready to go back. And Patty says, uh, yeah, so, so what do you think, guys? What do you want to do? Do you want to take a cab? What do you want to do? And Elias said, I don't know, Patty, what do you want to do? First guy to ever do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if this was, you know, if, if Elias was the 914th guy yeah. to say that to Patty, he had the good grace not to mention yeah. You know, he was, he, Dave and I have done a little talking about this, the, 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 the people that we've worked with that really have made a big impression on us, you know? That, I mean, we've talked about a lot of people here that, uh, you know, that we, that, that we worked with. We had a really good time. They were really good writers, and uh, we worked with them multiple times on various shows. But, but Patty, I think we went into the job 
with the idea that whatever happened, we probably could learn something, you know? And, and, and we did. And he, and, he, and, and he had, what he had was a tremendous kind of energy and passion for writing. He, he I'm, we both, I'm sure, remember this really clearly, and I don't think anybody else we ever worked with had this, but he had a, a book stand in his office and, he, and an unabridged dictionary on it. You know, Patty Chayefsky has an unabridged dictionary as one of his tools of writing in his office and used it a lot. He would just get up and go over there and check, because he was trying to deal with the characters and, and the way they would talk and the kinds of things that would give them definition. And, 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 he, would, and, and he would say, uh, well, you know, in this particular thing, these two people are going to be talking, or this guy is going to be talking, and we were all coming up with these characters for the first time, he would then just type dialogue or monologues for these characters about anything. It didn't had nothing to do totally, with the story. Total dummy dialogue. He'd just roll in a sheet of paper and just start typing. Just to get the, just to get the characters. For us, the, <clears> the <throat> big difference was <clears throat> that... Uh, you know, like like Marty and all of his early television uh, dramas, the characters were all these ordinary people, uh, you know, often blue collar people dealing with mundane, everyday situations. Uh, nothing theatrical about them. So uh, any jokes or any comedy had to be strictly out of the emotions of of the characters. And, and totally honest. He, he, he called it, you know, writing dialogue as if it had been wiretapped. You know, if you were to just uh, secretly record some guy on the street, he wouldn't be talking in punchlines and, uh, and perfect English. And so we, it was, uh, we desperately wanted to please him when we went off to write the <laughs> script. And uh, sometimes, we really did. Uh, you know, we carried it on to ludicrous proportions. I remember once we had an argument about a, a totally incidental character, a, an unseen uh, voice on a uh, apartment uh, intercom of a, of a doorman downstairs who we had named Wally, and we debated, we debated over whether Wally was too much of a cliche name of these kind of characters that we had seen in mid '50s uh, comedies, and uh, I remember, yeah, yeah and, and, and I mean, ultimately the name stayed in, I guess. But uh, that's how uh, you know that's how ludicrous it was that we tried to coincide our style with Patty's.